Good evening, welcome to Von Moth Presents Moths Ado About Nothing. Moths Ado About Nothing. Moths Ado About Nothing. Where we apply the revolutionary moth scale to classic and contemporary literature. Moths Ado About Nothing. Moths Ado About Nothing. Podcast contains mature content, spoilers, language, you have been warned. Hello and welcome back to Moths to Do About Nothing. I am your host, Steve-O, and I am joined today by Veronica Hernandez. Hello there. Scott Thurlow. Hey. Well. And Christopher Morgan. Good evening. And today we are going to be discussing The Gorgon, a 1982 short story written by Tanith Lee and winner of the 83 World Fantasy Award. The reason I picked this one is because it won that award in the year of my birth. <laughs> So, and mine as well. Um, I think I'm just going to do the summary here, the intro body and conclusion of this. I don't really have a funny logline yeah, I, or anything either. I was going to ask for that, but I, I don't know if anybody, I don't think anybody really has a funny I didn't have anything good. So basically, this is a story about a person who has, I, I guess he's an archaeologist. I think, no, I think he's a writer. He's a wannabe oh, writer. Oh, yeah, he's right. a writer. You're, you're, right. you're right. You're absolutely right. He, he's a writer and he's looking for. Inspiration. You know, inspiration for his next story. Sure. He talks about having been all over the world and going to all these other places. And he gets to this Greek island, and and there's another island off the coast that he's really interested in going to see, see what's there. And he keeps asking the natives about it, and they they all basically say, nobody goes there. You know? Well, they're uh, reluctant to even say anything about it right. at all. Like, they give him a weird look and tell him can't not really to find go. any information about it. Eventually, he gets out of his, like, tour guide that... Or what he thinks, what he believes the tour guide is trying to say to him is that they all believe that Medusa lives on the island, basically, yeah. or a Gorgon lives on the island. The one someone from the Greek myths. Right. Someone that'll turn him to stone if he goes there. So he decides to go anyway, and I think he swims across yes. the, you know, small... Uh, Half mile, maybe less, quarter know, mile, small he says. Quarter mile, yeah. yeah. And gets to the island and starts looking around. One of the first things he comes upon is like a stone deer. Yeah. And he gets to a small house, and there's, like, a gardener outside and tries to chase him away. An old with, gnomish man who's, yeah. like, apparently guarding the uh Tries to chase him house. away, which he does not run away. And, and he eventually meets the, I guess, mistress of the house who comes up and starts talking to him. And it he doesn't realize this at first, I guess, but it come, becomes apparent. Well, she's, like, half hidden in shadow or something yeah, like that. Yeah, she's first. wearing a mask, and which is, like, this big mystery to him. He really wants to find out what's going on. He starts talking to her, and she basically says, you can stay as long as you want. Starts talking to her, and basically starts falling in love with her over the course of this like night that he's there, sure. the day and night that he's there. And eventually, he gets drunk at dinner, and he asks her what's underneath the mask, trying to get at the mystery. What's in the mask? Trying to figure out what's going on. Like, And she basically tells him, no, I don't want to tell you. And eventually, But eventually, she does take the mask off, and it, it shows that her mask is distorted into this... Or her face, you mean? Or, yeah, her her face is distorted into this mask of pain, basically similar to what it looks like when a you know in the myths, what a gorgon yes. turns you to stone. It's kind of the idea. Of and what, I think what the, the reason like. was she suffered a stroke of some sort that yeah. left she her paralyzed in that in that way. And her, you know, her family tried to help her, but they there was no helping it, and um, it basically becomes this like really sad story. Her telling the story, and and you you kind of just feel bad that she. And, you know, like, she's just basically sequestered herself yeah. because I, it seems like she's just sick of telling the story and, like, explaining to people what's going on. And he has, like, kind of forced it out of her. And then that's basically it. I mean, he, 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 like, the next day he wakes up and from his drunken stupor and goes home and basically says, I didn't want to write anymore. Like, you know, he had, this, yeah, he had the writing. He was scarred by it. Yeah. <laughs> he had the writing shaken out of him, you know. I thought it. I thought it was a really well done story. Just the pacing, the entire time was awesome to me, and I really enjoyed it. But uh, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. See what you have to say about it. So I I really enjoyed the story. Um, at first, it was slow going into what was going to happen, but the buildup was nice. Mm-hmm. It wasn't too slow. There was beautiful description. You knew the surroundings, or you felt like you were right there with him. The yeah. the writer didn't have a name, so I'm just going to call him that guy. Um, the guy 
the author, if you will, goes through the entire story and at, with his interactions with the Gorgon or the Does girl. she have a name? I don't remember if she no, said her she name either. No, she didn't have a name either. Yeah. yeah. I really enjoyed the start because I think that the surroundings, all of the beauty did contrast to the Gorgon when he went and actually witnessed her face when she took her mask off. The conclusion, I think, was really, really well written. Um, I definitely was able to finish reading the short story and find some sort of peace with the story, even though the the subject of it was really sad, like Siva was describing. So I think it was really, really well written. Um, I'll give it a one or a two. What are we doing here? <laughs> three. It's a three. three. So we're doing intro body inclusion all together. I'll combining. give it a one, a two, a three. A three. A one to each. A three. That's a three. A three. <laughs> um, I largely agree. Yeah. A uh, good pick, Steve. All. I, I like that. The reason you chose it happened to be because of that. And this is a quite a good story. And I'll just mention one thing. I, the intro paragraph or two, maybe just the first paragraph to me. And I say this a lot because I'm a big fan of Lovecraft, but it was almost Lovecrafting. That was a point that I was going to make. I so, forgot like, to say that. So, like, of course, that, like, that's yeah. going to get to me. Like, I'm going to like that. If I think that of a story, then it mm-hmm. sort of automatically elevates it in my mind. But regardless, I think, yeah, it was definitely well done overall. It's almost like a slow roll. Like, th- the title implies it'll be something fantastical or, like, again, like, magical realism that we like to uh, sort of delve into sometimes. But it was basically just a straight-up, like, life story. Yeah. You know, set in the real world with something, a tra- tragedy has occurred to this person, and they're sort of ostracized there's a whole like, because of it and self-imposed like exiled essentially yeah. and then there's sort of like a haunting depressing end to it where the uh, you know the author you know the guy as uh verno described him <laughs> he tries to he like this might go to the themes but he wants to experience something and certainly does but not the thing he wanted to right, you know, in exactly. a much different way so yeah i thought it was very strong overall i'll probably give it a three myself um, I'm, this is really funny because this movie, or this movie, this, uh, story made me nostalgic in two ways. I mean, yeah, it's very Lovecraftian. And I was thinking 82. And when I was, you know, 12, I was reading, uh, Stephen King and so forth. And of mm. course, one of King's main influences is Lovecraft because it really reads like a book of 1980, a story from 1982, sure. which I thought was really mm-hmm. cool. Um, also as, uh, as, I took my honeymoon in uh, in Greece. Any story about Greece is going to immediately like, <laughs> I know what that is on I, that front. here. Um, but I, I agree with the rest of you. Uh, well done, Steve-O. It's a, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this one and uh, I really can't add much more than that. I could just discuss the nostalgia factor. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a three. Uh, I think we all have. Veronica, you said it was three. Yes, sir. Scott, three. And Chris, all three. three. Mm-hmm. All right. That's going to move us on to themes with chris themes there's so many things there's uh prejudice um there's perception hmm. there is once again self-loathing there's it's compassion i don't know if pity could be a theme but maybe that's <laughs> the counter to compassion mm-hmm. no it's just it's just was interesting with the the way the characters interacted really gave you perspective of what they thought of her and then when he described her you didn't all of a sudden you saw like his guide, is it Pithari or Pithos? Pithos, I believe. Pithos. Where when he made the face of the Gorgon, it was like it, he wouldn't go over there. He wouldn't talk about her and they made the face. And it seemed very cruel all of a sudden after you meet her. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of themes. I think the story is, um, doesn't really delve into any. This is not a criticism, but I don't think it delves into anything so much that it's heavy handed. It, it kind of like addresses it and then moves on. So, um, yeah, I'll give this one. Um, I mean, I think all the things you said are contained in the story, but, uh, in my notes, as I, after I was done reading, it's what I have is something like either the death of your dreams or the death of some kind of idealization that you had. And when faced with the actual reality, it changes your perspective. Like you said, perspective probably is the biggest one from the things, the list that you mentioned, Chris, but certainly I thought it was very well handled. And I kind of like that. Like, you know, like I said, he goes in search of something, finds something much different mm, and then this, yeah forever changed afterwards so i thought that was yeah. very well handled i like that and i'm like i said i i generally have a bias for that kind of stuff but when done well which i think it was here i'm gonna think it was very strong yeah it's kind of the idea of careful when you go out searching for adventure because you might <laughs> yes, find it exactly you know? yeah you're not always going to get what you want in fact you often aren't and a lot of times that'll leave you is certainly leave you changed and in mm. this case probably not for the better <laughs> yeah often not uh for the best yeah yeah, yeah i mean i certainly also saw the 
when somebody is telling you not to do something, it just builds your curiosity of course, yeah. and you just want to do it some more. And I feel like that was a major theme here because the guy had this idea that he was going to find inspiration in this island and everyone is just telling him not to go because they're silly and if this is all, you know, superstition, there's no such thing. At one point, there's interactions between the guy and Pitos, who was his guide um, on the island. And he's trying to explain to him, please don't go there. And like you guys said, he makes the faces of, unfortunately, the Gorgon or the woman. And he's just, he's laughing it off almost without trying to be rude. But he goes with this idea that it's, it's going to be this great idea, this dream, this illusion. And then he, his dreams are crushed and yep. you idiot. That's, that's pretty much what I have to say to that. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I enjoy the themes. I think it was very well carried out throughout the story. I would also point out that it's kind of strange that his interaction with her is as hauntingly affecting to him as it is. Like, he doesn't Maybe, even see her as I see what you a person. Like, she's like a life lesson to him after this, not even like a person, you know? And granted, I think I think what probably, in terms of this, haunts him the most is that he was such a dick to her. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I basically harried her until she took off the mask and... Gave him a story that was certainly not what he was hoping for and, and not what he was wanting to hear. But that's kind of that's kind of an interesting point as well. Uh, I don't know how well that fits into themes, but I think there's something to be I think said it's, there. I think certainly there's substance to it, but I, I like all of that. And like I said, I think it was well handled um, on both fronts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So is that ones all around? I think yep. so. I believe so. All right. Cool. And uh, we're going to move on to Antagonist with Scott. So this is sort of perhaps becoming a running theme itself, or at least in the, some of the recent stories we've read and um, talking about, is that you're your own sort of worst enemy. Like, uh, sort of a lot of things that you guys uh, just said that, yeah, you encounter something. Oh, there's a small island off the island I'm staying at. I wonder what's over there. And as people don't either are reluctant or refuse to talk about it, it only piques your curiosity more and more. Mm -hmm. And he has some sort of, you know, again, in his own mind, Certainly, inspiration is to be found there in some form, manner, or another. And he just, his desires to go there. If, I think he's, the, the, uh, we mentioned the Lovecraftian thing. He says he felt almost compelled, like drawn to it yeah. by yeah. something he couldn't exactly explain. Yeah, Shadow, totally. Yeah, so, I mean, then he encounters, like like you said, Sivo, she, she, the Gorgon in quotes is almost like a life lesson and not an actual person mm -hmm. afterwards. So, Again, maybe your own antagonist, like you, you're looking, um, care for what you wish for, I suppose, is sort of a rephrase right. of what you just mentioned. But I think, like, it's hard because what was he antagonized by during the story? Nothing per se, but then the ending implies he was antagonized like, by the entire rest of his, his life. Own, yeah, his own psyche, I guess. Yeah. Or, yeah. So like, or his own preconceived yeah. notions, maybe, of so what like, was. Taken as such, I think, again, I have a sort of, um, weakness for that, if mm. you will, myself. Like, I, I like that stuff when it's integrated. And I think it was well done here, and I'm probably going to give it a pretty solid one, if not a hard one. All right. I am having trouble with this one. I thought you might. I knew you might uh, say that. In the same way, like, uh, I'm starting to think of antagonist in these conversations as, like, one of the questions that I don't necessarily have to give a one, even if I think it's a great work. Sure. Certainly that's valid. Well, you can also, like I was saying in the past, that an antagonist can also just be a catalyst whatever it is it sets forth these uh, these uh circumstances um situations you know perceptions that kind of thing so i don't always see you know antagonist as a negative thing nor do i really ever so i'm just giving you yeah. something to work with brother <laughs> well yeah i mean i i think i think probably the best candidate for antagonist is the 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 preconceived notions of what this adventure is that he thought sure. he was going on yeah. what he was going to find there and how what when he set out for the island it was like i'm going to f i'm going to find a story to write and he stumbled across something that kind of turned that off in him yeah in fact made him you know? less able to write stories exactly less, uh, wanting to but like throughout the story it wasn't so much an antagonist like you're like you said at the end yes it was oh this bothered him for the rest of his life but it, like throughout the story, this was kind of just a, 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 a journey of self discovery, really, for him. I'm probably going to give Antagonist a zero on this. I get it. I, I can see where you're coming from. I just, I, the way I interpret it, I think that's how I yeah. justify giving it a one, kind of. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Um, uh, I'm going to give it a one. Uh, 
I, it, this is going to be something that's going to be looped into protagonist too. But mm-hmm. let me say that the story, the author, I give a lot of credit to because it, it's a, an immersive experience. Um, cause quite frankly, the, uh, the writer, I fucking couldn't stand him. So it's actually a woman. Or is it a woman? I thought it was a I man. Believe. Well, the, the character, the oh. writing character. That's what I mean. Writer, is that oh, the yeah. writer in the, no, the, the author of the, <laughs> so not the, story author, was a woman. not the author of the gotcha. story, but the, the character, the guy. <laughs> The guy, the writer, the, you know, your narrator. Mr. Tourist, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought he was insufferable. But the thing is, the author of the story, um, does such, uses that. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's the whole, I think that's part of the sure. contrast I see, I see to it. Mean, yeah. Um, so in, in cases like these, I have to say, like, would I like this person? No, I really wanted to punch him. But by the same token, he is used effectively against himself so mm-hmm. you know i'm gonna give it if that makes any sense yep no it's pretty much kind of what i yeah I'm gr- uh, i'm still having a problem with this i even as we're talking it out i don't think that the guy really can be the antagonist but i mean i i see what you guys are saying mm-hmm. as far as these preconceived notions and this idea, this dream that he had before he went to the island, um, that could certainly be what pushes a story through. So, I mean, if if that's what we're calling the antagonist, then I'll, I would give it a one. But I have to agree with Chris here. This guy. What an idiot. <laughs> well, you can continue to talk about him. Yeah, yeah please do. We're going to push on to a protagonist, Verno. And uh, I'm going to find myself in the same place that I was just a few seconds ago. I'm going to just reiterate that I don't know if there was even really a protagonist in the story. I mean, the only character that I could say... There was one, I, I would say. Well, okay, hear fair. me out. Fair the only one that I could say could fit that description would be the Gorgon or Medusa as the guy refers to her as. And the only reason is because it's she's living a life that is nothing of her control. Mm. Right? She's trying – is she even interacting with the guy? She's polite. He mentions it numerous times. You're being so polite. You're, um, you know, treating me as a guest and I'm intruding. Um, I'm the one that's going into your area, your space where you find some sort of solace in your – um loneliness or solitude uh, but even when she's describing the story she's not doing it out of harm even though she's she's angry because she's in the situation but she's not angry i think at them even though in the story it seems as though when she's saying certain phrases or um, you know talking to the guy there's some sort of um what's the word i'm looking for I don't know. <laughs> when they were speaking to each other you mean? A certain i don't know what. <laughs> no, no, i'll give you contempt. There you okay. go. Okay. Okay. Even though there was a tone of contempt, I think that she, if anything, would fit the role as protagonist, but I'm open to being swayed otherwise. Well, I would say – I'm sorry. Chris, you you had something to say. Uh, no, actually, I was going to discuss the scene because the scene – the dinner scene reminds me when I read the book of um, Beauty and the Beast or the original Beauty or whatever when they're having cake at the table and he doesn't want her – he doesn't – the beast does not want to see her watch him eat and she feeds him and catches a little thing. And this kind of reminded me of a weird, I get that similarity I and that the reverse kind of, yeah. So I'm probably going to save it. I don't know if to save it more for style or for, because I don't consider her the protagonist. I consider this asshole a protagonist. <laughs> and this is the problem I've been struggling with all day because it's like, I can't fucking stand him. But by the same token, he, as a protagonist, does his job. I mm-hmm. mean, like, you know, if this were a movie and it was a slice of life movie and you were just following some little asshole from his perspective and it, nothing, it wasn't really, nothing was really going on. Um, it, then I'd probably give it a zero, but given the nature of the story, given what happens to him, the perspective he, uh, provides on this, he does his job very well as a protagonist. So yes, mechanically he does well. Otherwise I, with, but well, how? I'm sorry. I'm going to challenge that. How is he being being so um, selfish or self centered in this idea or this adventure? How is he the protagonist? How is he? Well, I, w- I was actually going to address that. So I, go if, ahead. You, if you don't mind me jumping in, please. Go ahead. This story follows him. That's exactly. That's. I was waiting to say that too. That's this story it's follows him. first person to be clear. It's not from her perspective. It's not. It's. It's. 
it's his story. And that's why and I that's said why, mechanically. That's why he's a protagonist to me. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I see her as a very good character and she's pro and she's the reason that supporting characters are going to get a one from me, but, but he is the one that we follow the entire time. And honestly, yeah, he is kind of a shit, but he is a good protagonist in this sense. I think he's a very good protagonist in this sense because he keeps the story moving. He provides the impetus for this whole story to continue. Him being an asshole is the entire reason <laughs> that this is a good story. Yeah, and like I said, it's one of those things where I do consider him both the protagonist and the antagonist because of the dynamics he shows. Because there is character development with him, but it's basically, as we were saying, it's his perception. So, mm. you know, everything Steve just said. Sure. I mean, I largely agree with – I'll try, bo <laughs> try to tie both of those things together. So basically, A, I agree with you, Steve-O, that – just because of the, like it's written in first person from his perspective, mm -hmm. so that, like automatically that kind of makes him the protagonist, mm -hmm. even if yeah he's kind of a dick, but it's almost like the vessel. It's it's like it's almost if like that's not kind of not the point. Like he's the vessel for you to feel the feelings that mm -hmm. that, that he's experienced. So it's kind of right. odd in that sense. But I think that because of that, I'll have to give him a solid one because he is, serves that point. He serves that purpose, and I think the the actual author herself. Uses that very well. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's my argument for protagonist deserving a one. I would agree. What do you think? Yep. What do you think, Veronica? Uh, Where are you coming down on this? Uh, Did we sway you? I can see good good points all around. But you guys are full of shit. You don't Go. have to agree with us, though. But <laughs> no, 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 no. But they're good points, and I can mm. see where you're coming from. They're valid points. But did he serve it well? I'm going to have to go with a zero. I'm sorry. All right. You don't have to apologize to me. Don't be sorry. Apologize yeah, to Tanith Lee. Unnamed protagonist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, Tanith is going to have some words with you. <laughs> oh, God. Um, all right. Well, that's going to move on to me with supporting. And I just talked a little bit about yep. the woman, the like two, Medusa, as, three as he calls story, her. Anyway. Yeah. And uh, the other guy's Pito. Pito said liked him. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like he was enjoyable, and like the gardener, even that, like <laughs> took out the knife and tried to chase him away, was good. Clea, uh, was that the gardener's name? Clea. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but no, I think that was her maid servant. Or, like, the oh maid. yeah, that's right. There was, that was there, there. Yeah, she had it was a, like there briefly. Their... Yeah, but they were all fine. Like they were all fine. They were good, and you know, at at the top of the at the top of the supporting character game, you had. Medusa, I guess we'll call her. Sure, certainly. And she was awesome. Just a great character. And then, you know, you, you go all down through and like everyone did their job well and was interesting, I think. At least, at least everyone that was introduced had like some little interesting thing about them. Exactly. That's like the, like the, uh, woman who served them had that waddle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Precisely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like again, you're right, Steve. -O, I, I almost agree with pretty much everything you said and the way you said it that, yeah, certainly she's the most important side character. She serves the point or like, you know, the turning point. In his change of perspective, and everyone else fills out the world is believable and has a nice little like. Inner, you can see like they're not one dimensional characters. Mm. If they may not be three, they're like two and change or something like that. Sure, but they have some <laughs> they, they have some quirk or something to them yeah. that adds to them. But they're certainly not developed as much. But I'll give it a one for basically everything. Uh, that <laughs> Sorry. Mm, sounds good. Uh, I'm giving him one. I, I thought all the uh, I thought all the supporting characters are great. I thought they added a lot of texture and perspective. Whether they had any words or not, how they just behaved in the situation, how they treated her versus how they treated him. Mm. Um, and of course, uh, the Gorgon, uh, I liked her a lot. And so I'm giving it a very strong one. Right. Yeah, I have to agree. I'll give it a strong one too for secondary characters. I think they all did what they had to do to get the story, um, going to really bring it all together. Mm. So well done. All right. Sounds good. This one's all around there. And Chris, you want to talk about dialogue? Yeah. Um, quite honestly, there wasn't a lot of dialogue in this because it, it being in first person, sometimes it's kind of hard to keep up where the dialogue begins. But I'm going to say that the Gorgon, uh, her story, and I'm trying to remember if it was him telling her story or if she actually was the one who. No, she told it she to said. him. She, all right. Because it was. Uh, Quick side note for people following along at home. I don't know if this is clear, but anytime we mention the Gorgon or Medusa, those are they're the same person. Yes. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. I couldn't. Sorry, I couldn't remember before. <laughs> um, but I, 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 
she was very captivating as a character. And when she was telling her story, I was with her a hundred percent. So as I always say with dialogue, if it's good, if it's, you know, if it's on the um, plus side of serviceable, um, I'll give it a one, but I, I, I thought her delivery of it, it was the way, the way it was presented as opposed to what was, what was said. So I'm going to give it a one on that account. Yeah. I, I'm pretty much in your camp about this one. I was going to maybe give it a soft zero, but I, th- I don't think it deserves. Like, I, I think I like what you said, Chris. It's on the plus side of serviceable and even sometimes beyond that, specifically the scene you just mentioned yeah. uh, for sure. So, and yeah, the, like since the rest of it, again, is in first person and we discussed this a number of times now that if inner monologue indeed counts, maybe it's more style. But regardless, I think the actual dialogue that I count as dialogue that was there was probably a solid one for me. Yeah, I was going to say on the strength of that, scene alone i would give this a one it has like interesting exchanges like like we like we mentioned a couple times like the one where with pitos at least i yeah, like that with pitos exchange and too, yeah. talks about you know getting to the island and the, even the exchange with the gardener mm. where where he's like in broken greek i guess like trying <laughs> to talk to the guy so you know it it was that scene was really good i mean the scene with medusa where she explains everything her history yeah. yeah that was really good everything else was like you guys said, on the plus Pretty side, rock of, solid. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, that's. I mean, that's where I land on this. I think the tone of the dialogue was really well written. Um, it was presented very well. It had its moments as they got to know each other, the Gorgon and the guy. It goes in a little bit more personal, more um, friendly mm. as it's described in the story. So, I think that as it progresses, as they get to know each other, and at the very end, when it culminates with her taking the mask off and that whole exchange, I think it did a really well job. Even though it's it's very brief as far as a whole story, it, it definitely did its job. Mm-hmm. So, one for me. All right. So, that's one's all around on dialogue. We're moving on to style with Scott. All right. So I very much like the style of the story. I would say it's like, even though we mentioned Lovecraftian overtones, I don't think it's Lovecraftian influence in the, the style of the writing per se. I would say it's a, it almost is like a Hemingway story mm. because it's very short to the point, but not dry at all. Right. The descriptions were excellent uh, for sure. Yeah. I think we mentioned that. So yeah, I th- it was just like a nice fluidity to it, I guess I want to say, that moved at a, I think, Steve, it moves at a very nice pace. In fact, I think it is paced perfectly. So, just a solid job. It was it was just easy to get into and follow along. And by the time before I knew it, the story was over and it leaves you with sort of a haunting, depressing note. Yeah. And I kind of like I said, I like that stuff. That uplifts me. Uh, <laughs> ironically, I love that that kind of comes out of nowhere. Like you don't expect that until the very end of the story, yeah. and then you're like, oh damn. And the last, yeah, the last <laughs> line right is like it's like sort of a meta reference. Like she turned me to stone, not literally, of course, but he sort of became emotionally deadened yeah. in a way because of it. So yeah, I think style is probably a very strong one. Kind of the the this the slow build of tension in this yes, was done exactly. so well. It, it was just like you you don't even notice any tension at first, right? It's like always there a little bit under the surface if you go back and really think mm-hmm. about it, but you don't really notice it. And then it like builds up so perfectly until it's like you can taste it basically. <laughs> yep, I, I I love the way it was done, and you know it, the the Lovecraftian thing definitely came through to me. I didn't even think about the Hemingway thing mm. until you mentioned it just now, but you're right. Like it's very, it's like if Lovecraft did down to earth, <laughs> yeah. you know, with non cosmic horror yeah, things happening. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Overall, it's a, uh, it definitely is a very competent story of its time. It reminds me of, you know, a very quintessential 1982 uh, short story, but what really I have to give credit to, and it's the devils in the details is, Anytime I read a story and you can sense what they're talking about, the, the ocean, the food, even the food that was mediocre mm. versus the wine, he has always come back to the wine. And like when you can just, when you could sit there and it, they convey smells or tastes or those kind of textures, uh, I, I definitely have to give that a one, a, a very strong one. Um, it was very immersive in that respect. Yep. Um, so again, it's just because something is serviceable doesn't mean it can't be extremely well done it's like having a burger yeah a burger is a burger until you have a really good one <laughs> fair enough good analogy but i agree with it yeah gentlemen i can't add any more i think you guys have hit everything that i liked about the style about the story um the lush surroundings the characters the uh, weather the water it's mm-hmm. like you're sitting mm-hmm. in a tropical temperature and 
it's you're right in the moment of the story, not too fast, not too slow, perfect lighting as much as you can when it comes through in words. So um, definitely a strong one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Veronica, why don't you uh, keep talking? About whether you recommend this or not. Oh, don't mind if I do. Um, I will recommend this story. I have previously been on this podcast, and I am not familiar with Lovecraft. But the more you guys talk about it, and the more the stories that we read that are similar in style that you guys describe, have traces of him for sure. Yeah. Right, it makes me want to read his stuff. But at the same time, it's. Don't expect it, this if you read Lovecraft. Where I was going to say, <laughs> Lovecraft is calling but, to you, which but, is always a bad sign, really. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I would definitely recommend it um, for the sole reason that I did not put this down. And I am big on description. I like the characters, even though I didn't like them. You get what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. You, you don't have to like, like them as characters, the but you can appreciate how they were done. Mm -hmm. I will give it a strong one because I, I think it was really, really, really good. Uh, Werner, um, Read Shadow of Innsmouth now that you've read the story. We'll give you some Lovecraft recommendations after this, but I'll take it. Yeah, I, I'd highly recommend that. Um, I'm definitely giving it a one. Um, I think I've stated all the reasons why, but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely like, like I said, Steve, a good random like ish pick reason to pick it and ended up being an excellent story. I could see why it won that year, and uh, I would definitely um, tell people that you should check it out for sure. It was a well done story, and I enjoyed it uh, a lot, and you probably will too. I'm going to give this a one for recommendation. It's a great short story. Definitely check it out. And, you know, like you said, it won for a reason. It won the uh, World Fantasy Award that year for a reason. And mm -hmm. it's weird because hasn't it's aged, not quite fantasy. It hasn't but it, aged poorly. It it's, isn't, it's, it's, it's aged just yeah. just fine. Like, you can, you can pick this up. Like, if you told time. me this was, like, if I didn't have the year on it, I would have believed. Like, it could, you're right. It could yeah. have been anything, but still quality. But, yeah. So, that's it. Got the scores. Chris and Scott both gave it a 10. And Veronica and I both gave it a nine. I wish for a s aggregate score of a nine point five, and I think that I'm uh, a, I'm a, I'm happy yeah, with that. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. It's, uh, like Steve was made up for uh, great previous recommendations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was so glad I edited that show. That was hysterical. Sure. <laughs> check out check out a Howard Turtle Dove episode. Oh God. Oh God, no. <laughs> or don't. No, listen. To the episode. Do. Don't don't read the yeah. story. But anyway, this has been. Uh, I'm not to do about nothing. I am Steve-O saying goodbye with. Veronica Hernandez. Bye now. Chris Morgan. Good evening. And Scott Thrill. And I must retire to my own island. <laughs> Good night. Lots to do about nothing. Editing and engineering by Stephen Hermosi. Lots to do about nothing. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates. <laughs>